back to the channel, Blue Oval Dude here. If you want to learn how to modify and race prep your oil pump, today is your day. Hold on guys. So first thing we're going to have to do is disassemble this oil pump. So we're going to take off the four bolts in here. We're going to remove the soft plug that is right here. And we're going to take out this rotor right here the actual part of the pump and the guts of it. And I'll show you that after I take it apart. And I always orientate these back where they were, you know, and I'll check clearances and, you know, make sure everything is in spec and how it should be. But uh, that's something you'll have to do. So let's take this thing apart. So we've got our pump here and I have scratched in the direction of the plate so I can put that back on the same way. And so we'll start by just taking this base plate off from the pump. So we're just gonna pop these bolts out. Get them all cracked loose here. And uh, then we can start on the next part of it. And you can always, um, sometimes when I'm working on this stuff, I'll throw it in the vise. It just secures it, makes it a lot easier so it doesn't move around on you. But right now, I will just uh, do it right here, but usually when I do the work on it, I will throw it in the vise because it just makes it a lot easier to work on. It's such a small piece and it moves around too easy, so that's what I'll do with that. Now, <laughs> these rascals are a little slippery right now. Um, Alright, almost there. Now this one has been run before, so we're going to take it apart, and as far as I know, it's in not too rough a condition. And no, it actually looks pretty decent. I don't see anything rough inside of here, so far anyway. So then, I will usually just take this, and then because I want to orientate this the same way, then I will scratch a small, tiny little scratch on the bottom of there, just so I can put it back the same way it came apart. And it doesn't take much, and it's not a deep enough scratch to do anything, just so you can see where it was. And it's not actually gonna go into the metal. So, there you go, if you can see that in the camera. So, there we go, this stuff is ready to take apart. And then uh, that also makes it easy for you to remember which side is top, which side is bottom. I mean, I think one side is bubbled, one side isn't, but anyway. So there it is. There's that part. And there's the other part. And yeah, this thing looks fine. Um, yeah, I don't feel anything bad in here no deep scratches no gouges anywhere i mean this thing almost looks like it hasn't been run but it has this thing has been run all right so now i will take apart the bypass and um, then i'll come back and i'll show you what's inside of the bypass and we'll get to that all right so here we are Completely got it out. We've got our oil pump here. Our, this is an M83. I don't know if I said that already. Right there. So this is your standing, standard uh, Melling uh, 351 Windsor pump. Garden variety. So this will actually meet the needs of most people. The majority of people, if you just modify this thing, it's really pretty good. And uh, most people it's good enough for them, absolutely. So, here we go. So, this is actual parts of the pump. Of course, our plate and cover, our gear rotor, and uh, this is actually the bypass valve, bypass spring, and that's the soft plug that holds it all together. So, I'll just show you here real quick. Can you, there. Um, uh, there we go, okay. So, how it goes is, this is your bypass, so that goes in, and it goes all the way in, and you will actually see the tip of that thing sticking through over here. 
And then behind that sits your spring. And behind that sits your soft plug. And how I usually get these out is I'll use my die grinder and I'll just grind that down and I'll stick a screwdriver in there and pop it out. And that's how I get them out. If someone's got a better way of getting these out of here, I would like to hear it. I mean, I don't know any good way to get those things out of there. And um, I just get at some new soft plugs from your local auto parts store, not a big deal. So pretty simple how this works. Here's a bypass spring is actually what controls the pressure that your engine can see with this pump. This thing can move more volume than it moves stock, but that is controlled by this spring right here. When it builds up too much back pressure, and here, here's where it comes in, your oil comes in here and comes in over here, and then it goes into the pump, and then the pump pushes it out, and this is where it goes up the port and it feeds the block. So when it builds up too much back pressure here, here we go. When it builds up too much back pressure to go up it, what it does is it pushes the bypass back right here and then it returns it back to the inlet side. So it's recirculating that. So it just goes round and round and round and round is all it's doing. So if this is, if this is set pretty low, this spring, it's just gonna push it back down and around and it'll keep you know, recycling some of that oil. So that's what that's doing. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, let me get some more light and try and show you this a little bit better. Um, one second. All right, so there, how's that? Does that help out? All right. So on the inlet side, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to radius all those edges in there. You can see how sharp that is. It's just a straight 90 where it's coming in and going up and going you know, to the rotors. So I'm gonna radius all that out in that area. And so that is right down here. So I'm gonna radius all this area out and smooth that out so the oil can flow in easier. I'm going to basically gasket match our inlet just to make sure that that oil isn't hitting that edge and you know rolling. And then I'm going to gasket match right here. It'll be a little bit smaller, but you know I want to make sure that I'm utilizing all of it. Also, I'm going to this is a very rough casting inside of here. Some of these are worse than others. So I'm going to smooth this all out with some of my bits. Um, for example, I'll use like this guy right here and I'll go in here and I'll just smooth all this out. And also down in this area, see if I can get that a good shot of that for you guys. There we go. I'm going to, here I'll take something else. Uh, there's some sharp edges down in here. I'm gonna radius this edge here and this edge here so that this can flow into the engine easier. And this, this is not affecting the bypass. So we're not even changing that. But if we can make this so it's not backing up before it even leaves the pump, you're gonna get more pressure just because it's flowing into the engine easier instead of you know, hitting these sharp edges and trying to you know, push this and it's just having a harder time of it. So. We're going to make this pump more efficient, take less turbulence out of it, less chance of it uh, creating, aerating the oil, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to make this a better unit. I will get this done and I will show you what it looks like when I'm done with it. And then we'll go into how we can change the pressure of our pump if you wanted to increase this pressure. All right, so I'll get going and I'll be right back, guys. So thinking about pathways and and ways that a person can go and stuff like that. It makes me uh, think of Proverbs 3, verse five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. All right, so we've gotten everything cleaned up. I cleaned all this stuff up like a man possessed and got it prepped. 
to ready to put back together. I have a new soft plug here, a Dorman part number 555013. I don't know if it's too shiny in there or not, but 555013 if you're looking for that Dorman part number for that soft plug. All right, so here are all our parts ready to put back together and assemble. So I'm just gonna show you what I did inside of here so you can have a good look. And then I will just assemble this unit and it will be ready. All right, so as you can see right here, I told you I was gonna radius all these edges. Well, you can see in there how nice and smooth and radius that is. No longer a straight 90 degree cut right there around this corner and this corner and this edge here. So around most of this, I have it radius. Also right down in here, this little edge right here, this gets radius right here. All right, so you can see that. And see if I can get a good shot of this some way, somehow. So you can see in there. Um, there, now you can kind of see in there. So you can see that these edges right here are radiused and smooth out. There used to be a, a big ledge right up in there and there is no longer a ledge and the other side and on this back side down here this was laid back in this area and smoothed down in there and of course this port here is going to look a little bit better and of course i smoothed this passageway in here which is very difficult to see very far in there but you can see a little ways in there that that it is indeed smoother and, and a better finish than it was before. So, this pump is totally ready to be put back together, assembled, uh, and lubed up, put in a bag, and ready to go on an engine. So there's that guy right there. Um, now, I say that I don't like high volume oil pumps, and for most cases, that's true. You don't need a high volume oil pump. So they've got 25% more volume, and that volume ends up just being recycled within this pump, you know, so you're just recycling more and more, you're putting more strain, you know, on your camshaft, and you know, on your uh, drive gear, on your distributor, so it's really unneeded. Really a good place is if you, for a high volume oil pump, is if you've got a lot of clearance, uh, and your bearings, you know, you've got a, let's say, demolition derby car or something like that. That might be a place where you've got a lot of oil clearance where you need to have that extra volume so that this thing um, basically doesn't lock up as easy. But for most everyone else, I don't recommend using high volume pretty much ever. You will get more oil pressure uh, down low at idle. Um... But you know, if it's got the same relief in it, you know, you'll probably have close to the same, you know, up top, depending on, you know, clearances and all that stuff. Anyway, enough on that. So if you want to, um, well, let me start with this. If you've got this done and you've done these mods, you'll probably get about five more PSI out of this pump, you know, than you had before, five to 10, somewhere in there. Um, Usually if, if I do this, and I like to see, you know, between 60 and 65 PSI for most things, you know, um, the more oil pressure you have, the more oil is going through the system, the more, the more oil is going through the bearings and back to the pan. You have to have uh, better drain backs and stuff like that, which is why we do that other part to the blocks. One of the reasons, and so, um, combined with this, we can have a pretty good oiling system that'll, for most people, take care of it. So if you want more pressure, um, what I do is I will assemble this, I will put my bypass valve back in there, I'll put my spring in there, and then I will take a washer, a regular washer, and that fits inside of the bore 
and I will put that behind the spring when I assemble it and then I will put my saw plug and pawn that saw plug all the way in and if I do that I'll usually have around that 60 to 65 psi which isn't too tough on stuff um, you know this this pump can can pump quite a bit of volume more than enough volume than a person really needs so all right hit that like share and subscribe all right thank you guys all right guys until next time keep racing keep wrenching keep having fun with your hot rods have a good day guys